So I'll talk about minimal container images first. Um, you're supposed to use minimal container in, uh, images according to the um, container best practices. Uh, they, they are more secure, they load faster, and one way to get them is to use Docker Slim or Slim Toolkit or Min Toolkit, what it's called. And uh, originally, uh, the way um, Docker Slim worked and still works, it instruments containers at runtime to get telemetry. And one of the new options is to use eBPF to collect telemetry uh, from the host. And I thought, well, I wonder if there is another way to get the telemetry um, to minify containers. And ultimately, it's about figuring out what you need in the container images. And lazy loading that you can get with a container D thanks to a couple of snapshotters is uh, an interesting option because the whole point of using lazy loading is to load the image on demand uh, and only what you need. Now, lazy loading is not a default option that you get with containers. Uh, there's a couple of uh, snapshotters, remote snapshotters that make it possible. Uh, and it's not a default option because of the container image format constraints. Yeah, so here's an example of what it takes to uh, configure those snapshotters, but I'll go into more details later on. Yeah, they're configured as proxy plugins and ContainerD talks to them through a gRPC. Now, with, um, with the container images, what you have is something like a, a tree um, where uh, it's built based on the build flow where you, know, you have the initial data and then uh, another layer on top of that and another uh, layer on top of that based on how you build the image, which is great when you're building it, but not great when you're running. Uh, this means that the, the image layers, they need to be loaded first um, to figure out the file system you have and to figure out what you need. And, and here it just shows that uh, what we have with, um, uh, with, um, with the layers is just a bunch of tar files, optionally gzipped. And inside we have uh, the files themselves. Now with um, StarGZ and Sochi, what they allow you to do, they allow you to um, load the images on demand. And uh, in, um, in some cases, well, in both cases, they use layer indexes. So in, in both cases, you need to build an index to know what's inside of each layer and uh, how you can extract different files. So each index uh, includes um, a table of files with their offsets. And then at runtime, uh, the snapshotters use range requests, uh, range HTTP requests to uh, request the, uh, the subsets of the layer um, blob. And then it's all possible. The on-demand loading is possible because of FuseFS, which is great on one hand. On the other hand, it makes things a little slower. But when you try to access a file that, that's not there, uh, a callback from Fuse tells the snapshotter that it needs to load uh, a new range, and then it makes a call. Now, with Sochi, you have um, an index that lives outside of the image and it's not 
part of the original image, uh, which makes it uh, convenient. You don't have to change the images. Uh, there's a couple of uh, pieces of metadata you get uh, with Sochi. The, uh, the, uh, the Sochi index manifest that tells you uh, the indexes for all layers and then the, um, the, in, um, the layer indexes for, uh, for each layer. And uh, there it has a few screenshots that show how to create the uh, Sochi index uh, that then gets pushed to the registry as a separate artifact and then it just shows what you get with the manifest and then uh, with the data. Uh, one thing to note in the uh, lower right corner, I guess from where I stand, you also need to configure um, uh, the Sochi uh, snapshatter not to fetch data in the background because it negates the whole purpose um, of um, um, observing on-demand loading because everything gets loaded. And with uh, star GZ, you have a similar setup. You have an index, uh, you have uh, range calls, but the index, layer index, is a part of the uh, layer itself. But for that, the layer needs to be rebuilt. So instead of having one tar file uh, that's gzipped, you have a whole bunch of uh, tar files where each file in the layer is uh, tar archived and then gzipped. And that makes it possible to access the individual components. And then at the end, there is a footer that uh, uh, points to the uh, location of the uh, index with the, with the file metadata that the snapshotter loads. Uh, at runtime when when it starts, and then again you also need to uh, disable background fetching because with the background fetching, um, with background fetching, uh, you don't see all of the um, uh, requests based on use. You only get um, well, you get everything. We won't have time for a demo. I'll be happy to do a demo offline. Um, and it just shows that, you know, I run commands, access files, and then in the registry um, that I instrumented, I get the, uh, the data, the offset data in the range requests. And then I use that data to map back to the files. And then I use a list of files based on that to generate a minified image using Docker Slim. And I think we're good in terms of time. No, no, I, I mean, I'll do it offline. Like anybody is interested, um, I'll. Yeah, I'll probably need more because I haven't uh, had a chance to uh, see it in in the morning. So, uh, let's move on to the next speaker. Okay. Okay. Then if that's okay. All right. All right. It's okay. So we got. So what I'm going to do, so I have the registry window open. And that's a slightly modified distribution registry. Then uh, give me a second. I need to delete the image.
deleted the image, and I'm going to use a nerd CTL. And it didn't show up. So <laughs> OS release. Yeah. So what it was supposed to show up uh, there is the um, the, uh, the HTTP calls to the registry with the offsets, and then um, and then I wanted to show the. Uh, Landmark is still there. Oh, yeah, right there. Back. Uh, it's a hacky demo, but it'll, call, it'll be close enough. So first I ran uname, and uh, the request is supposed to uh, generate um, a get request with a range header and it's supposed to point to an offset that's close to this offset. The way it works, it actually uses chunks to uh, fetch the, uh, the different parts of the, um, of the layer. And usually the chunks are bigger than the file, so you don't fetch the individual files, but then you can map the offsets from the range requests to the stuff that's in the index file, and then you can get the files that are used. Um, so that's, that's the whole point. Uh, but you need an instrumented registry and, uh, well, a modified registry to log those range requests, which is not a big deal, one line of uh, code. And then you get those requests, and then you uh, map those ranges to what's in, in the... Um, table of content um, metadata in Sochi and in uh, uh, StarGZ. But there's a couple of gotchas. Uh, you need to disable background fetching, and you need to reduce the, uh, the size of the chunks. And by default in Sochi, the chunks are four megabytes, called spans, and, and then um, in uh, um, StarGZ, they're also pretty big. So if you need accuracy uh, in the file name resolution, you need to uh, adjust those settings for the snapshotters and when you build the index. Um, Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Thanks so much, Kyle. Let's give Kyle a hand of applause. Thanks.